Making multiplayer games in Godot is super easy for the most part, but there's a few topics that people get hung up on. I'm kind of creating this miniature series where I'll go over these topics and help you guys get a solid foundation for creating games in Godot. The first thing that you're going to run into is creating a connection from one client to another. Now, the way Godot handles this is using peers. There's several different types of peers, the most common being Enet multiplayer peer. However, some games want to target HTML5 exports, and in that case, you will be required to use WebRTC or WebSocket peers. So how do we create a server? The first thing that we need to do is create a peer and store it in a variable. So I'm going to make a variable called peer and set it to a new instance of enet multiplayer peer. It's very simple to create a server using the enet peer. All you have to do is just call peer.createServer. And this will take in a few parameters. The only one that is required is a port to run it on. Now, usually you just want this to be uh, like a four to five digit number. Um, I like to use 999 or 25565. There's also other parameters in here as well. And you can check these out in the docs, uh, max clients, max channels, bandwidth and out bandwidth. Now, max clients is pretty self-explanatory. Max channels and bandwidth and out bandwidth, you should never really have to worry about. Now, the last thing you want to do is tell Godot to use this peer. So in Godot, there is a global multiplayer variable, and this gets us access to Godot's multiplayer API. In order to tell Godot to use our peer, we have to do multiplayer.multiplayer peer is equal to the peer that we made. So there you go. It's very easy to create a server, but what about joining the server? Well, that's equally as simple. Once again, we want to make another Enet multiplayer peer for the client that joins. And now rather than telling this peer to create a server, we just create a client instead. Now this will take in two parameters, an address and a port. The address is going to be the IP address of whichever server you're trying to join. Now, if you're just testing this out on your own machine, you can just pass in a loopback IP. For the port, this does have to match what you used in create server. In my case, I used 9999. And then once again, we need to tell Godot to use this peer that we just made. And there you go. That's how you join and create a server. Now there are some signals that are nice to know. The first one is peer connected. This will fire off whenever a client joins the server. Now this signal will also give you the peer ID of whichever client joined. Whenever you join a multiplayer game in Godot, you will always be assigned a peer ID. For the server, the peer ID will always be one. And for any client that joins, it'll just be a random integer. There's also a signal for peer disconnected. Once again, this signal does give you a peer ID to work with. Also worth noting that peer connected and peer disconnected aren't only specific to the server, they can be ran on the client as well. There are a couple of signals that are specific to the client that includes connected to server and connection failed. These are pretty self-explanatory. They just emit whenever you connect to the server or failed to connect to the server. Now, one thing that is probably important to do is handle any errors. Now, create client and create server both return an error. So we can actually catch this by passing this into a variable to hold the result of this function. And again, this can be done on the server as well, and it should be done on the server as well. With that all said and done, that's about all you need to know about Enet multiplayer peers. Now, there is one major drawback, and honestly, I think it's one of those biggest issues with multiplayer, although it's not really their fault. Um, and that is that if you're trying to join a server that is outside of your own network, that server will have to port forward. So if you're trying to make a peer to peer peer game, which I think a lot of indie devs do, it presents a pretty big challenge because now either the hosting player has to port forward, which is obviously not ideal, or you have to come up with some other solution. I actually did come up with my own solution for this and I will be releasing a video here in a few days on that and how it works. With that all said and done, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Maybe you learned something, maybe you didn't. This is obviously pretty basic, but it's always important to have a good foundation of when you're making multiplayer games. I will catch you guys in the next one.